Hello everyone, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today, 19th October 2024, we are going to discuss articles from both 19th October as well as from 16th October because due to the rain, we were on leave on 16th October. So, we have taken articles from 16th October too. So, let us see the topics for today. The first topic, how smart insulin promises to revolutionize diabetes treatment. This article is taken from the newspaper Indian Express and that is from 19th October. And the second article, greenwashing guidelines. It is taken from the 16th October Indian Express and the third article Modi to visit Russia next week to take part in BRICS summit. This article is taken from today's Hindu newspaper. So without much delay, let's get into our discussion. So before moving into our discussion, there is an important announcement from Shankar IAS Academy. Shankar IAS Academy's pre-storming UPSC prelims test series 2025 batch 2 has started on 5th October 2024 and the first test will be on 19th October that is today. So we know that prelims is getting tougher every year. So do registration and attend the test. Now we will start the discussion with the first article. Look at this newspaper article taken from Indian Express how smart insulin promises to revolutionize diabetes treatment. This newspaper article is talking about a smart insulin which was you know, uh, researched by uh, different scientists in Denmark, Czech and United Kingdom. So we know that diabetes is the biggest global concern personally because more than half of the billion people are affected by the diabetes and it is the reason directly and indirectly for nearly 7 million deaths every year. And until recent times, we thought that diabetes cases are very high in developed nations like West. But recent studies found that the diabetes cases are increasing even in underdeveloped nations and in underdeveloped regions such as Sub-Sahara. So therefore, it is a high time to take steps to fight diabetes. So in this context, let us discuss more about diabetes. First, we will start with the basic question, what is diabetes? It is a long-term condition where the pancreas, the gland either stops producing insulin or the body cannot properly use the produced insulin. So what is insulin? Insulin is a hormone responsible for regulating the blood sugar in a person's body. What happens if the insulin cannot be effectively used inside the body? It will elevate the blood sugar and uh, will lead to a condition called hyperglycemia. Even though the diabetes is a lifestyle disease, it, it can lead to many other health risks such as blindness, kidney failure, heart attacks, strokes and lower limb amputations. We know that the wounds in a person with diabetes will not heal properly or it will take a very long time to heal if that wound is very deep and wide. Therefore, the unhealed wound over a period of time will be subjected to infection and sometimes it can even lead to amputation of that particular body part. Now we are going to see the type of diabetes. There are three types of diabetes broadly. The first is diabetes type 1. It is an autoimmune condition where the pancreas stops producing insulin or will produce only little amount of insulin. Therefore, to treat this type 1 diabetes, it needs insulin therapy, injections or pumps. Coming to the diabetes type 2, here the diabetes happens when the body cannot effectively use the produced insulin and it is very common in middle-aged and older people. And type 2 diabetes can be a result of changing lifestyle and uh, the problems uh, associated with the medications. And then we have the gestational diabetes. From the name itself, we can see that it is occurs during the gestational period, that is during the time of pregnancy. And usually after the pregnancy, the problem of gestational diabetes or the elevated blood sugar will come down. But it can pose a risk in the future. That means again, the women who went through gestational diabetes may, may experience diabetes in the future. Now we are going to see the challenges associated with the current insulin treat. We know that the people with the diabetes will experience both hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia that is high blood sugar and low blood sugar. Therefore, it needs constant monitoring of the blood sugar level inside the body. So, sometimes we can see that the people with the hyperglycemia will faint suddenly due to hypoglycemia because of the rigorous diet or you know or due to the overdosing of insulin or the second challenge of the present insulin treatment is the overdose causing hypoglycemia in a person that is the sometimes a person needs only, you know, uh, for example, we can say that uh, 20 ml of insulin, but uh, they will take the same amount of insulin every day and this can lead to, you know, a severe fall in the blood sugar level and it can lead to other issues such as fainting, dizziness and even other, you know, severe health risk. So, we discussed what is the problem associated with the traditional, you know, insulin. So, the smart insulin that is NNC2215, it is a ring-shaped structure that will be attached to your body and the glucose molecules, the glucose molecules will be automatically turned off and on when the body needs. That is, the glucose level will remain. That is, the insulin 
will remain inactive during the time of low blood sugar that is if the blood sugar is normal then the the smart insulin will recognize it and it will turn off the insulin and if there is any rise in the glucose level due to you know food or due to other conditions then it will automatically turn on and it will inject the insulin and it will keep the glucose level from rising now we are going to see how this smart insulin is going to change the diabetes management the first major impact will be reduced the burden of blood sugar monitoring that is at present a person who is following a traditional you know insulin method has to monitor his blood sugar level at least thrice in a week therefore through using this smart insulin we can save the time as well as it will reduce the burden of you know constant monitoring of the blood sugar level and it can also improve the mental and physical health for patients on insulin treatment for example people with uh, diabetes will also experience uh, psychological issues such as stress anxiety and depression and uh, physical issues such as you know uh, sudden dizziness tiredness sometimes body pain you know the people with the diabetes will experience you know a burning sensation beneath their feet so these kind of you know health issues or physical temporary physical issues can be avoided using the smart insulin and at present the researchers are aiming to make the activation more gradually for smoother control of the diabetes so this will pave further you know way for other developments in diabetes management so in this topic we discussed what is diabetes what are the different types of diabetes how the what are the challenges associated with the traditional diabetes management okay, and how this smart insulin is going to change or revolutionize the diabetes management so in this context try to answer this prelims practice question the question is which of the following treatments is commonly used for managing type 1 diabetes option a oral medication option b insulin therapy option c only lifestyle changes and option d surgery the correct answer is option b insulin therapy so with this we will move to the next article look at this newspaper article from indian express 16th october greenwashing guidelines we know that the world is moving towards green development right this is a transition zone but certain organizations and companies will take this as an opportunity to sell their products making false claims that they are eco friendly and environmentally sound but actually it may not be so this will distract our you know development steps towards green at the same time it will also disastrous for the environment so the central government has recently introduced that is central consumer protection authority has recently you know gave certain guidelines to counter the problem greenwash so let us discuss more about this in this context so what is greenwashing so before moving into our de definition there is a question in upsc 2022 prelims they asked the you know definition of greenwashing the question is which one of the following best describes the term greenwashing option a conveying a false impression that a company's products are eco friendly and environmentally sound option b non inclusion of ecological or environmental cost in the annual financial statements of a country option c ignoring the disastrous ecological consequences while undertaking infrastructure development and option d making mandatory provisions for environment cost in a government project or program so for example imagine that you are facing this question for the first time in your life but you have no idea what is this, what is this greenwashing and you never heard this word before but still you can answer this question using some logic you know we often hear the word brainwashing right what do you mean by brainwashing convincing someone that this thing is right so this uh, that's what we call the brainwashing usually but actually it may not be right so use that logic here greenwashing that is conveying a false impression that a company's products are eco friendly and environmentally sound so we can still answer the question using that logic now we will move to the real definition like this is the real def definition actually but still greenwashing can be simply defined as false claims made by the companies that their products and services are environmentally friendly environmentally friend environmentally sound and eco friendly but actually it may not be for example certain companies will produce bio fertilizer saying that our bio fertilizers are you know eco friendly therefore it will not cause soil pollution or it will not cause you know poison in a, in the food chain but actually it will cause soil pollution and it will also affect the food chain so this is actually a, a situation of greenwashing so now we will see what are the guidelines the guidelines for prevention and regulation of greenwashing 2024 this is issued by the central consumer protection authority under the ministry of consumer affairs you know they are created these guidelines to prevent companies from misleading the consumers claiming that their products are eco friendly and what is the key point of this guideline that is hereafter the companies which are claiming that their products are eco friendly must provide a scientific proof that their products and services are eco friendly and it is applicable to manufacturers service providers advertisers 
and endorsers who promote the environmental claim for that particular product. Now we are going to see the impact of greenwashing on consumers and environment. The first major impact on consumer is it will affect the trust of the consumer. It undermines the trust of the consumer and it can direct the consumer spending towards business that do not actively, actively reduce their environmental footprint. And the second impact will be environmental degradation. That is the companies will give a kind of illusion that they are working towards sustainable development, but actually it may not. Like I said in the beginning, they may produce bioplastics saying that this bioplastics will you know degrade easily and it will not create uh, environmental pollution but in reality the plastic the bioplastics produced by that particular company will take years to degrade and it can still cause pollution now we are going to see the consumer protection laws in country because we are spending so therefore we also have certain rights the first important consumer protection law in india is the consumer protection act 2019 and this legal framework will address unfair trade practices including greenwashing and other misleading advertisements so interesting fact that recently there was an incident that i'm not mentioning the actor's name uh, an actor claimed that using this soap will you know make your skin brighten and it will smoothen your skin but a person an old man brought this and he used that shop uh, you know that soap for uh, for many months but he still he he didn't experience any change therefore he approached the court saying that this advertisement is misleading this incident actually happened in india so that much right a consumer has in india that means if he found that the advertisement or the product is misleading definitely he can approach the court directly and second one is the role of central consumer protection authority that is the consumer protection authority under the ministry of consumer affairs can impose fines bans and also take legal action against the misleading advertisements and products and also we have consumer awareness initiatives such as campaigns like Jago Garak Jago to educate consumers. Jago Garak Jago means wake up consumer. This is an awareness campaign raised to create awareness about the rights and uh, privileges a consumer has in the society. So in this topic we discussed what is greenwashing and its related aspects. So try to answer this prelims practice question. The question is with the reference to greenwashing consider the following statements. Statement 1. Greenwashing refers to the practice of companies falsely portraying their products as, as environment friendly. Statement 2. The Central Consumer Protection Authority is responsible for regulating greenwashing in India. And Statement 3. Companies using terms like eco-friendly or sustainable in advertisements must provide scientific evidence to support their claims under Indian law. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? Option A. 1 and 2 only. Option B. 2 and 3 only and option C 1 and 3 only and option D 1, 2 and 3. The correct answer is option D 1, 2 and 3. So with this we will move to the next article. Look at this newspaper article taken from today's Hindu. Modi to visit Russia next week to take part in BRICS summit. We all know BRICS the famous intergovernmental organization consisting of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. They will hold summit every year and this year's summit will be in Russia. So let us discuss more about the BRICS in this context. So coming to the formation, the, Br the BRICS was actually or officially established in the year 2009, but there was a proposal, there was an idea uh, for the for, uh, for an intergovernmental organization like BRICS in 2001 itself. And later in 2010, South Africa became a member of BRICS and the organization came to be known as BRICS because in 2009, there was only four members that is Brazil, that is Brazil, Russia, India and China. In 2010, South Africa joined the organization and it came to be known as BRICS. And the objective of this organization is to ensure economic development through attracting investments and uh, bringing other opportunities and pushing for global, you know, global level governance reforms, such as, you know, reforms in the United Nations and enhancing political cooperation, especially among the nations in global south and coming to the members of BRICS in 2001 that time when the idea was coined that time it had four members that is Brazil, Russia, India and China later in 2010 like I said South Africa joined the organization and in 2023-24 the BRICS went for a biggest expansion that time Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia and even Argentina also became member of BRICS. Now we are going to see certain key facts related to BRICS. BRICS ensures global representation because 45 percentage of the global population are living in the BRICS nations and it contributes to 
nearly 37% of global GDP. And BRICS represents emerging economies and rising power. For example, BRICS has India, Brazil and South Africa. They are known as emerging economy. At the same time, it also has superpowers such as Russia and China. Coming to the certain BRICS initiatives, the first major initiative is New Development Bank. It was founded in 2014 to ensure infrastructure development and funding for infrastructure development. And another important factor related to this new development bank is all five present members, that is Brazil, Russia, India, and China, and South Africa has equal sharehold in this new development bank. And the next initiative of this BRICS is contingent reserve arrangement. This will provide financial support when nations are going through certain emergencies such as debt trap or other disasters. And apart from these two initiatives, the BRICS also has UFA declaration this is to enhance medical cooperation between the BRICS nations and this this is very important in the present scenario because of the rising cases of you know new epidemics as well as infection and and the BRICS also has a forum for science and technological framework this ensures innovation and technological transfer between the BRICS nations and coming to the strategical importance of BRICS to India. The first major importance is global governance. That is, BRICS act, act as a platform to push for United Nations reform. Because India, we are contributing to United Nations and we are also participating in United Nations relief as well as in, you know, peace activities. And India is playing an active role overall. But, you know, the United Nations is a forum which still has certain elite dominance. Therefore, this organization BRICS will provide an opportunity for India to push for further developments in the United Nations. And second one is alliance with India strategic, India strategy for strategic autonomy. India is a nation which stands for, you know, sovereignty and political autonomy of every nations in the world. And you have to note another thing that is no members, another thing that is the members of BRICS are not members of NATO or any other military organization led by U United States or Western nations. And the uh, next importance is South to South cooperation. So what is South to South cooperation? So we know that using the branded line, the world can be divided into two parts based on their development and the economic growth. And the North includes United States, uh, dominated, you know, the North in America and uh, the Europe, Russia and uh, Australia. And uh, the global South includes underdeveloped or developing nations of Asia, Africa and uh, South America. So this is you know this is this line this branded line is used to you know classify the nations based on their development and economic growth but this forum or this intergovernmental organization BRICS will ensure global south to south cooperation especially especially you know attra through attracting investments and collaborating with emerging markets and it will be also useful to raise the voice of the global south because we know that india south africa and brazil these nations are standing in the forefront to you know to raise the voice and issues of global south especially in the field of economic growth development and climate change therefore it will play a key role in international diplomacy coming to the challenges of BRICS, the first major challenge is economic diversity within the organization the organization has different levels of economic development among new and founding members for example china and india okay, they are members of BRICS, but still we have you know issues with china and among the five members of the BRICS, China and Russia, they are the most powerful in the terms of military as well as as well as with their political and geopolitical influence. So this will create a kind of inequality within the intergovernmental organization, maybe in the near future. And the second one is the challenges related to the expansion. That is concerns over lack of consensus in expanding the group. For example, recently nearly five to six nations joined the BRICS, right? They all have a different, you know, geopolitical interest as well as strategical interest. So, therefore, the expansion, the group may alter their objective and principles in the near future. And another issue is need for a clear membership criteria. So, that is lacking in the BRICS. Therefore, it may create imbalance within the group, like I said. What will be the future of BRICS? It can definitely bring global impact. It could re reshape the political and economic order in the world because we know that no members of the BRICS are members of NATO or any other military organization led by United States or Europe. And at the same time, through enhancing the global South to South cooperation, it can also achieve economic growth because already the global South is contributing, that is the BRIC nations are contributing to nearly 
37 percentage of global gdp therefore it will definitely have a capacity to alter or to change the global economic order in the future and the next is enhancing brics position in multilateral institutions like i said they can raise the voice for global south at the same time through raising the voice for global south they can address issues and they can also push for reforms in united nations and the next important role of the brics will be in, uh, in countering the western dominance in a multipolar world so multipolar world the word emerged after the fall of soviet union in 1991 the the fall of soviet union in 1991 brought an end to the bipolar world and after that world entered into a phase of multipolar that means every nations will have their own autonomy and their own voice but still the world has certain issues such as dominance of united states and and it led united states led western based global order and therefore the brics can push for a multipolar world by reducing the western dominance for example inclusion of you know nations from gulf can push for de dollarization so through that we can reduce the influence of dollar across the world and through that we can also reduce the economic influence of united states and its western led global economic order so in this topic we discussed what is brics its formation how brics is important to india what is the role of brics in the present international scenario and also will be in the future so with this background try to answer this prelims question actually this is a previous year question asked in upsc in the year 2014 the question is with reference to a grouping of countries known as brics consider the following statement statement 1 the first summit of brics was held in rio de janeiro in 2009 statement 2 south africa was the last member to join the brics grouping the answer for this question is too early because this question was asked in the year 2014 that time south africa was the last member to join the grouping because south africa joined in the year 2010 statement 1 is incorrect because the first summit of the brics was held in russia not in brazil therefore statement 1 is wrong statement 2 is correct but if the question is asking now then the answer will be neither one nor two that is south africa is not the last member presently we know in 2004 in 2023 24 nearly five to six members joined the grouping therefore both the statements will be wrong at present so with this we are concluding our discussion with this we are coming to the conclusion for today's newspaper analysis so if you like the video hit the like button and also give your feedbacks as comments and share this content with your friends to make the competition more healthy and before leaving this channel don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to receive the on time update thank you have a nice day